This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In this demo now, we want to look at managing permissions in a SharePoint site hierarchy. So let's go ahead and bring up our SharePoint site collection. So we're looking at a just a generic SharePoint site, nothing special about it. There's a top level site called the intranet portal. And then I have a subsite called HR. Go ahead and click on that so we can see not much there. But there is a document library, there's a task list, okay, a number of different elements in there. Now, permissions, if I go to the top level and I want to manage permissions, I need to look at the site settings. So let's go up here to the little gear icon and that'll take us to uh, uh, an area where we can choose site settings. Now, when I'm, when I'm looking at the site settings at the top level, then we have some site collection administration settings available to us. And that's kind of how you know. If you see that, you know you're working on a top level site. And one of the first little categories of all of these various different settings is users and permissions. So I could click on here and I could take a look at site permissions. And this is where I would then be able to see a list of all of the permissions that have been set up. So I can see that portal members have been given edit permission level, owners have been given full control, visitors have been given read. Okay, so there's a number of permissions that are in there. And take note of the little check boxes. This means that these permissions are editable. I wouldn't have those check boxes if I was working in a subsite where everything's being inherited. We'll look at that in a moment. But as soon as I check some boxes here, then these ribbon elements, uh, some of them become active. Okay, I could remove, remove user permissions, or perhaps edit user permissions. Now, let me uncheck those boxes, and you can see that those options become grayed out because I, I haven't selected which ones I want to remove. You also have a check permissions, which will display the permission levels um, that affect a user or group's access. So if I click that button, it just is a good way to be able to plug in a user and check their permissions against a site or against a, a resource. You check it and it'll tell you what level of access that person has and where that permission is coming from. Now, I can create groups, which would be SharePoint groups, and that would be available throughout the site collection, or I can also grant permission. So let's say I wanted to add somebody in here or add a group of users in here. So I can add a name, um, let's say Alan, and it's trying to perform a uh, uh, it's trying to perform a lookup, and it finally found his name there, Alan Steiner. So we're going to add him into uh, the list now. Before I click share, which would be a way of basically saying I want to share those permissions, include a personal message with this. I don't necessarily have to do that. Let's go ahead and. Uh, hit show options. Notice here the options send an email invitation. I don't necessarily want to send an email invitation to him. I could and that's why I, uh, when I would include a personal message but also select a group or permission level. Okay, so I can add him to a group that already has been given permissions or access to this particular site. So simply by taking Alan and adding him in would make him a member of one of these groups, a SharePoint group, and thereby give him that level of access that the group already has. Or let's say I, in this case I wanted to make him a designer. Well, I don't have a group that already has the design level permission, so I can assign him one of these. And notice the different permissions levels, full control, design, edit, contribute, read, view only. So let's say I want to make him a designer, so I'll click design. I'm now giving him, I'm not making him a member of a group, I'm giving him directly a particular permissions level. And that terminology is important, permission level. So I'll click share. And he'll now show up in the list. So I can see that Alan has been given the design. 
Now, what is the type? Notice the type is user. So this is a permission that was assigned directly to him as a user account. The others are SharePoint groups. Now, I could also add in here, uh, in fact, I'll just do it so we can see it. I'll grant permissions. I'll type in a name here. Let's see if it'll help me. Up oh, there we go. I typed in domain users. This is an Active Directory domain, and I can tell that it's an Active Directory domain because it has the domain name first, backslash, then the group name. If it was a SharePoint group, it wouldn't have that. So let's go ahead and show options. I'm not going to send an email. Let's take this group and give them uh, contribute permissions. We'll go ahead and hit share. So now we can see how it shows up a little bit differently, the type. We've got some SharePoint groups, but there's the domain group that I just added in. The other way I can tell is because of the way that it's named in here with that backslash. We can see the various different kinds of permissions. Now, permission levels. Permission levels can be defined here. If you see that button. So I click permission levels, and I'll see a list of all the various different ones, like design, edit, contribute, read, full control, and so on. If I want to add a permission level, I can click this link, and it gives me the ability to define my own. Um, maybe I'm going to, you know, call it um, something like read, but you can also make one type of change. You know, so whatever name, descriptive name you want to come up with, now here's a listing of all the individual little permissions. Okay, so maybe you can read, but you can also add items. Okay, that doesn't mean you can necessarily make changes to everything, so it's not as major as the edit permission, but it gives you a few other little things. So there's tons of different individual permissions that can be granted with these permission levels. And so you can be much more specific than the defaults of full control, design, edit, and contribute, and read. Okay, so that's what permission uh, levels are all about. Let me go back uh, a couple levels here, back to my list. Okay, so I added Alan. He now has uh, design access, domain users have contribute, and these other groups have these um, various different permissions. Now, this was at the top level site, so let's go ahead Click the Browse button. Let's go down a level. Let's go down to a subsite, HR. And now that I'm in the HR site, every site has its own site settings. So let's go ahead and click Site Settings again. This time it's going to take me to the HR site settings, and I can take a look at permissions. And by the way, take a look at Site Collection Administration. This is how you know kind of where you are in the hierarchy. I am not at a top level because I've got none of the Site Collection Administration settings here. But I do have some permissions for this site, so let's go ahead and click on Site Permissions. Now, right off the bat, it tells me this website inherits permissions from its parent. And it tells me which parent it's inheriting from. And there they are. There's Allen that I added in with design permission. There's the domain users group I added in with contribute permission, right, and all the other ones that are in there. So it inherits. Now my button options across the top are a little bit different. I can stop inheriting permissions if I wanted to, or I can use this as a shortcut to sort of jump back up to the top level. So if I stop inheriting permissions, it'll give me a warning. Are you sure you want to do that? Click OK. And then all those checkboxes will suddenly become active here in a moment. Um, OK, so before it brings us back to the, the list and the checkboxes, it's taken me here and it's basically saying, do you want to create a new group. Now that you are changing, you're blocking inheritance, you may want to create a new group because the existing group is called Contoso Intranet Portal Visitors. I might want to create one called HR Visitors because that's the name of the site. Same thing with a group called HR Members and a group called HR Owners. Not a bad idea because we don't want the owners, the full control people that we're assigning at the HR level to be confused with the people who are owners of the group at the top level. We want them to remain as two different groups. So using the existing group, probably not such a great idea. Let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, it took me back to the site, so let's go ahead and look at those site settings again. Site permissions. And notice all those checkboxes are back. 
because, and Alan's still here, the domain group is still here. Here are the three new groups that I just created, and they've been given edit full control and read permissions. But why are the intranet portal members still here? Why is Alan still here? Well, that's because when you create and set it up such that it has unique permissions, it first makes a copy of the parent permissions and brings them down. But now that I have the checkbox, I could come in here now and I could say, I don't want any of these people to have access. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and leave that one just in case because I don't want to lock myself out. But I'm going to go ahead and hit remove user permissions, pull them out of there, and, um, you know, I would double check. I would make sure that I'm a member of the owner's group, you know, and have access before I, you know, finally remove this because I don't want to lock myself out accidentally. Um, uh, but ultimately, then I can come in here and I can add, and I'm now managing with unique permissions. Now, keep in mind, every list, if I go to this task list as an example, every list has its own permissions. And I can take a look at uh, the list settings. And you'll see a link in the list settings called permissions for this list. And just like everything else, this list inherits permissions from its parent. In this case, it's inheriting from HR because HR was the point where we blocked inheritance, so it's a new starting point. It's a new parent. And it's got all the same settings that we set up in the HR site. And the same would be true on list items, documents, everything. So that's a look at how we sort of manage who has access and how we work with things like permissions inheritance in order to set up the security model of access to our content exactly the way that we need it to be. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.